Hello, I'm Lux, and it's back, ladies and gentlemen! And I'm Ember, and the return of Dragon Lord Ember as well! <laughs> and it's time to give you the smolder. I just made her cringe, ladies and gentlemen. It was awesome. Ladies and gentle colts, please help. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 8. Yes, 8. Episodes 1 and 2, School Days. Well, I enjoyed that. That was fun. I liked how they handled everything. The only thing I didn't like about the two episodes was I could use a stronger word for it, but the... I'm going to say that naysayer. That's a good w Insert pun here, yes. Because that guy could use a good swift kicking to it. And I forgot to double check it, but I'm pretty sure he was voiced by the guy who does Brain from Picking in the Brain. Sounds quite like it. So if not him, someone who has a similar sound. It's kind of like if they snuck Patrick Stewart in there kind of thing. Still a little disappointed that they didn't. Yeah. It's okay, Chris. We like you. Yeah, he's an awesome voice actor. He did an excellent job on the character. It's just, it's kind of like finding out that Danny DeVito won't be voicing Detective Pikachu in the live action movie. Though who they're getting to voice him is someone you do not expect. Like a shrimp attacking you. Shrimps can attack you? <laughs> no, they can't. That's why it's unexpected. Is this pony humor? <laughs> Uh, also, the person who's doing Detective Pikachu is the guy who plays Deadpool. Just let that sink in for a moment. But moving on to the actual story, and Twilight Sparkle starting a school. Good idea! Should have asked Celestia for more advice than just what was on the cue cards, because I have a feeling that the rules in that book are actually kind of loose. They're not super strict. The head guy probably reads them that way, but I have a feeling the rest of the council probably doesn't, because I have a feeling... Celestia's school doesn't quite follow all of these regulations as well. She probably did when the school first opened. But I almost have a feeling that these guys are going to come back. Season opener villains usually return. But here's the thing, he wasn't really a big bad. <laughs> this is another season that no mystical magical MacGuffin creature. He is much more dangerous than a mystical magical MacGuffin creature. He is a narrow-minded creature in a space of high authority. Ooh, good point. That is much more dangerous. Because any magical creature and magical bit bad magical MacGuffin, we can hit with the good guy magical MacGuffin. <laughs> and turn them good, yes. Yes, but narrow-mindedness doesn't have an easy magical cure. That's why the school in the first place. Mm. Though Twilight's rather... Um, racist comment at the beginning that nobody except ponies knows anything about friendship. These poor creatures have no idea about friendship. Well, here's the thing. Throughout the movies and the series itself, that kind of gets proven. But yeah, it's kind of a racist comment. But still, it's proven heavily. The only time these, which is kind of bummer, creatures find out about friendship is through ponies. Which is kind of weird, because at least maybe they don't like know the word friendship, because I have seen friendships in other races in Equestria and stuff like that. Yeah, there have been friendships. They're just not by pony rules. Maybe it's specifically the magic of friendship she's trying to teach, which is different than friendship itself. Whatever. That comment was my first nitpick. Though that comment you had like right at the beginning of the episode was kind of fun, too can't remember exactly what it was, but the tone in your voice was wonderful. It was like, ooh, I got shivers. I'm also moving a couple inches away from Ember. Well, it was basically what I said because it was right after Twilight's comment about the poor creatures who had no idea of friendship. And I went, oh, that's not at all racist. <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, it was enough to make me go, ooh, this is a good start to the episode. It's got Ember going. But moving on to what was your favorite of the new characters? <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you specifically asking about the students because... Specifically the new students. Because there was more than just students. What were the new characters within the students? Because I, I can only think of one we got any real personality from, which was the guy you just bashed verbally. 
I don't recall the Hippogriff General from the movie. Oh, yeah. There's also another thing. This picks up right after the movie, and I love how easily and swiftly they went, yeah, Tempest, we're just not going to talk about her. Mention her that she's going across the land. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Going across the land. Is that like getting sent to the medical planet? Yeah, I think what it is is like, oh, shoot. We haven't designed a standard model for her that actually would work in the older software. Yeah, we'll just push her off to the side and can we, now we can build that. Because then she can run into the pillars and they can all be together and that can be a thing. Hmm. Though the Storm King's influence was outside of Equestria, so that's where she's spreading the word. And I don't know about the niece basically being the same personality as the daughter. Yeah, I kind of mistaken them for the, wait, that's the niece? Well, I thought that was the... No, no, that was the niece, and it doesn't really make sense that she's behaving exactly like the daughter because the daughter was kind of shown to be the exception among the hippogriffs during the movie. Also, how did she manage to transform back and forth without the pearl? Though I think that was kind of semi-established somewhere near the end of the movie, but yeah, it was one of those, I know they're going to do that, but they won't explain how. Well, they didn't really explain it in the movie. I nitpicked it back then. Pretty sure I did. Hey, subscribers, can you go check that in the other video for me, please? And, and comment below or above or on the side, because I don't know what YouTube will magically do one day. So I'm just going to cover all the bases. Somewhere around the video, there will be a box or a device where you can enter in information to make a comment on our video. There. Covered. But they actually took the time to build up clicks, not just the species clicks, but having, oh, the griffins and the dragons. Yeah, their personality types and ways of communicating initially would probably make them more compatible. I like that. I also liked how shy the changeling was. Though, I actually, my, this is... Not biased or anything, but my personal favorite was actually the pony. Just something about the way he talked. It was kind of like, yeah, dude, without being, yeah, dude. He was basically mellow and chill and non-confrontational. Though, you know, his early comment about, oh, are you a student here too? Like, oh, yeah, he deserved that sarcasm. Yeah, yeah. Is that sarcasm? Because that was totally not what... <laughs> That was totally not what you were doing right there. But then at the same time, even while in the behavior styles and the ways of communicating, the dragons and griffins are more similar, they're also both more predator designs, hmm. where if you look at the ponies and the yaks, they're more of a prey design. And hippogriff, like griffin, can go kind of either way because they have the horse element, but then they also have the claws and the feathers. So yeah, the way that split could be interpreted negatively as well. But I'm going to say that that was more based on communication styles and existing cultural norms and less about any direct racism. Or would you call it speciesism in this case? Would you call them races or species? I think that particular word there is interchangeable. I think it's more like the cultures of dragons and griffins worked better together because they've always been a little bit rough and tumble overall in their cultures compared to the other cultures which were rough and tumble just in a different way. Because the yaks are very rough and tumble. Yak smash! <laughs> Though that reminds me of the fact that I really like how this group of students were like the main six, but had their own unique twists and also differences like we kind of had our fluttershy in the changeling and then we had rainbow dash split in two covering both smolder and great we should have made sure of all the students names yeah they kind of blended together on that chart twilight had at the end well we need to find all these so i know yona ocellus smolder sambar that's about it which one was the hippogriff I didn't say her name. Okay. <laughs> because the hippogriff is more of the Pinkie Pie. 
the the highly excited and running around and kind of not quite fourth wall breaking but world rule breaking and of course the earth pony is the one who's most like applejack i did like the fact that they did include an earth pony instead of going with one of the other ponies you know either a unicorn or a pegasus well if you think about the overall mix they already had three flyers griffin dragon Actually, flyers outnumber everyone else because Griffin, Hippogriff, Dragon, and Changeling can all fly. That's a total of four. So including a Pegasus would have meant that only the Yak was unable to fly. And including a Unicorn would have probably given an overabundance of magic to the group. Because all of the magical mischief uh, seemed to be limited to Ocellus. The changeling, just in case I got the name wrong. I also love how they used her transformation to the weirdest thing flying ever to scare the living daylights out of everyone else. Because <laughs> they were just having fun. And then they didn't quite nail the landing. They nailed it. It's like when NASA misprogrammed that pod that they sent to, I believe it was Mars, and they did the calculations in feet. Or was it in meters? I know they flipped feet in meters and they buried it in the surface. Mm, brilliant. Yep. What did you think of the overall plot for these two episodes? Most of it was predictable, but I still enjoyed the ride. This episode was, like, really good. It felt nice. I mean, okay, she's going to open a school. Okay, the school's going to fail spectacularly and then come back. Oh, we have all these different races. Yes, they're going to start by not getting along at all, and then we're going to have a group of friends. Oh, the school was shut down. Hmm, yeah, they're probably going to want to stay together. Yeah, I think the way they handled it worked really well. It was really smooth. I also loved how everyone just interacted with each other, and even though we spent time in the main six, they weren't the main focus. They were there, they were the framing for everything, and they still came back in in important moments. Because the lesson was for Twilight, but it was also for the students. It was also for the main six, but it was kind of balanced nicely between all of them. It didn't really heavily stay with any one of the main characters or the group. Or the secondary characters, or anyone really, because... There were lessons to be learned for everyone because it wasn't just the main six. It wasn't just the students. It was also the students' guardians. Possibly even Celestia because she's the one who told Twilight her school had to be by the book. I think Celestia also forgot how by the book Twilight can be. I don't think she truly forgot that because... Twilight had all her note cards and started asking lots of very good questions. And then Celestia deferred her to the rule book. But a lot of rules are open to interpretation. That's why we have, in the U.S. justice system, we have the appellate courts, the higher courts, the lower courts, and the supreme courts to look at and interpret the meaning of laws and how they apply to specific situations. Since Celestia knew that this was going to be a multi-ethnic school, she obviously saw no problem in the rule books. And there may not be a problem in the rule books. The problem may be specifically with the Chancellor. Because he specifically said as he was phrasing things that this is going to be for ponies, 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 for ponies, to protect ponies, for ponies. And I'm like, ooh. I see a flaw in the plan right now because I've seen images from this ahead of time. Well, of course it's going to be a flaw because he completely misunderstands the concept of the school from the beginning. Even though he read through Twilight's proposal and it should have been in the proposal somewhere that I'm going to be teaching these creatures friendship to help spread friendship throughout Equestria to make us safer. What's making us safer is friendship, not teaching ponies to defend themselves against all these other things. It's kind of like teach a man to fish versus just handing him a fish. Because if ponies are friends with all sorts of different creatures, then those creatures aren't going to attack because you don't attack your friends. And if the ponies or any of the other creatures get into trouble, 
They have friends to call on to help. You make yourself stronger through friendship, through allies. Fr friendship is better because an ally can still be someone who will turn against you in the future, and you have to be very, very delicate around them. You can't go, yeah, we're allies. So that means I can talk bad about you and we're going to still fight together, right? No. I know it's the same thing about friendship, but friendship is a little bit of leeway because you can jokingly say that to someone you're friends with. But if you jokingly say that to an ally, the ally may misinterpret that. And, and a friend is probably going to give you a chance to explain yourself. An ally is going to go, you know what, I'm just going to take my Barbies and go home. <laughs> uh, I did not expect that. Like a strip attacking you. And going back to the original point, Twilight Sparkle would not have had to specify in the book that she was teaching all creatures. She could have said all are welcome and the Chancellor would automatically interpret that that all is going to be ponies because almost all of the people, air quotes on people because many animals are also shown to be highly intelligent and let's not even begin with what was in the Everfree Forest and the dragon from season one, the interpretation for school within Equestria would be that it would be for residents of Equestria. And if the Chancellor was thinking about students coming from other lands, he was probably thinking something like Saddle Arabia, which is still a horse type population. Which we don't know for sure is outside of Equestria, but considering that the dignitaries from Saddle Arabia came and all four princesses needed to greet them, but only three needed to talk with them. Though that reminds me of how the ponies had to keep correcting themselves. <laughs> Going from, uh, all, every pony, all, all creatures. <laughs> <laughs> because they grew up their whole life saying, okay, every pony come down, every pony come on. So now it's actually everybody, all creatures, everyone here. So the ponified versions of the words that we've gotten used to over the past seven seasons can actually be reverted to the human tongue now. Convenient. What did you think about the two songs? All right. I mean, they don't really stick with me after the fact, but they summarized well. And I also like Dragon Lord Ember at the end is like, look, he can stay if you promise to stop singing. <laughs> Uh, when that happened, I was like, wait, did that singing montage, like, actually not actually happen, but happen because the hairstyles changed, and but it seems like no time has passed. Also, I actually preferred the second song over the first song. I liked the first song, but I actually liked the second song a little bit more. Well, the second one's a little more upbeat, and it's less of an exposition song. Mm-hmm. So the first song is describing, okay, school's starting, classes, okay, buy the book, buy the book. Oh, this is fun. Judging down to this is boring. I hate this. I don't know what I'm doing. Why am I here? So any more nitpicks you want to go over that we missed somehow? Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure based on that piece of paper you're holding right now that's rolling across the room. <laughs> ah, funny. I thought so. There were lots of little cute touches of friendship. Oh, oh, I broke my quill. Here's another quill. I was half expecting that to be a feather pulled from somebody's wing. But it was a regular quill because nobody had that feather pattern. And it looked exactly the same as the one that broke. Also interesting that the students were using quills, but Rainbow Dash came in looking for a pencil. Hmm. Also, I bet you Quills and Sofas is doing gangbusters right now. Oh yeah. Also, it was nice to see the castle of the two sisters again. Yeah. Though I thought they fixed it up a little more than that. Also, wasn't there something done about the banners? and they restore them or move them? Yeah, I'm pretty sure the castle of the two sisters was actually fully restored because I remember there being a roof and everything. And we went to the castle of two sisters more than once because we did it in Castlemania, but we also did it in... Uh, I think it was called Imagination Manifestation. The one where yeah. Rarity gets the book uh, that actually turned out to be of dark magic. I remember that, yeah. Pretty sure that was a the castle was restored. Yeah, so unless we destroyed it 
in uh, the final big battle with Tyrik. Or the movie. So unless we did one of those two things, I'm pretty sure the castle was mostly intact. Another thing, I just realized this movie confirms the movie is canon. It's not side canon. It's actually canon. Because they specifically mention the pirates and being thrown overboard and Tempest and the Storm King and all the seashell necklaces made for the hippogriffs turned sea ponies. Those are too specific to just be glossing over. So the movie is straight canon now. Anything else or should we start wrapping this up? Well, I'm sure we could do plenty more, but let's wrap things up. This definitely makes me look forward to the rest of the season Especially since I've seen minor spoilers here and there. I hope they're minor. I've tried to avoid them, but I wanted to get ahead in art, so... Also, please enjoy my art. <laughs> Which I'll go into in the outro, but... What are you looking forward to based on this? I'm curious to see where they take it. If we're really going to stay school-focused the whole time, how are they going to handle it when friendship problems come up and the map calls them away from their classes? They don't have the accreditation, but you still have a problem of having teachers missing. Who are they going to get for substitutes? On um, what kind of notice? Mm, kind of like the opposite of the superhero being the student. In this case, the superhero is the teacher. But the thing is, the superheroes in this version don't have a secret identity. They can say, excuse us, class, we have to go deal with the friendship problem. And everyone would understand that. But you can't leave the students unsupervised. Especially considering that this is a school where the students are actually residing. Or a funnier way to put it, excuse me students, my butt is vibrating, I need to go save the world. Also, we've been talking long enough, reminded me of something I didn't bring up, that I meant to bring up as opposed to other items. <laughs> this was very much in common with Spice Up Your Life. You had something that had a good concept, they couldn't get accredited, tried to get accredited, but things went better when they were unaccredited and did things their way. Hmm. Also, that reminds me, what did you think of the morals? You know, the lessons that we were supposed to have learned. Those were a bit more complex because you had the students learning the more, air quotes, basic friendship lessons. And you had Twilight and the Main Six dealing with a different set of lessons of the importance of taking on new responsibilities, of giving appropriate feedback of being true to yourself of not following something just because it's the way it's always been done yeah that's the one that really kind of like me go hmm this particular part of the lesson can be interpreted in so many different ways and a lot of them are bad i'm going for the version of not sticking with something just because it's the way it's always been done and less about the fact that they threw out a rule book and turned their backs on the entire system. I'm going to go with what you said. And this has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 8, Episodes 1 and 2, School Days. So now it's the return to ponies and friendships and blah. <laughs> uh, but seriously, so outro, art, Lux draws it. You can find it on the internet. There are links. Videos. We make them. You can watch more of them. There are links. <laughs> Comments. You can make them. We put some filters in. Be nice. We do have a bad hammer and we will use it judiciously. Money. We like it. There are ways to give it to us. Also links. Thank you so much for watching and listening. We appreciate all of the support that we receive and the form of views, likes, comments, dialogues, suggestions, and of course financially as well. But all of it is truly appreciated. Thank you to all of our supporters, subscribers, etc. in whatever form you choose to grace us with your presence.